Hello everyone, welcome to 3dedesignacademy.com. In this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to make a product design shape like this one over here. All right, so in the alias file, I already have the canvas set up, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that you need to do is, of course, you need to create a curve. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to snap it at the grid like this, and I'm just going to expand it out like that to using my middle mouse button over here. I'm just going to move it up because I think the center of the circle is over here or the half circle. All right, so that is good. And now, of course, it does have a little of shape over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the stretch tool over here and I'm just going to bring it up like that. Now, when you're doing this, because I'm going to be using the revolve tool, you have to make sure that the pivot is actually centered at the grid. If it's off, that is going to give you a result that, that is also going to be slightly off. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the revolve tool over here. So I'm just going to double click on it like this. Of course, initially it is going to be shaped like that. Now, when you're doing this, you got two options. You can either, so let me just go to my preferences, construction options. Now, if you want this to be a perfect circle, you can have the rational flags on. Uh, the primitives and for the curves and surfaces. But for this one, I don't think I really need to uh, because the rational uh, it requires a little bit more precision and the surfaces do act a little bit weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that and I'm just going to have it uh, have the rational flex turned off. So now uh, I'm just going to grab the revolve again like this. And what I'm going to do is, well, right now it's not revolving around the right axis. So I'm just going to change that to Z like that. And as you can see over here, you'll see that the beginning and the end is going all the way around, uh, making a circle. But I don't really need it to go all the way around because I only need a half circle over here. So in that case, what you can do is, well, I usually for circles, I do like having degree six and I do like, uh, because I only need a half segment of it, I'm just going to re uh, increase the segment count from one to two. And that is going to give me a little bit more precise radius. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the radius over here. And as you can see, oh, actually, let me just hide the canvas for a second. It's kind of hard to see. So um, actually, you know what, let's use curve curvature. So I'm just going to double click, on, uh, double click on curve curvature and I'm just going to have min max radius on. And as you can see over here, the range is pretty close. So it ranges from 372.679 to 372.66. It only, the variation is only about 0 0.02 if you round it up. Now I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to reduce the segment count to one and let's see what happens. So if I were to do a curve curvature over here, now instead of 0 0.02, it's almost off by one and a half. Actually, yeah, about one and a half. So as you can see, having two segments is going to be, of course, a lot more precise than just doing one segment. So I'm just going to have it like this and that's all you need. Now, of course, I don't even really need the top, so I'm just going to delete that over here and let's go ahead and make the canvas visible again. And of course, you do need to build this segment over here. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and grab a curve. I'm just going to stretch it all the way to here and I'm going to use the Alt key in combination with my right mouse button so that the segment runs all the way there. And it's pretty simple from here. All I'm going to do is just do a rail. So it's going to one and one and that is done. All right, so of course you do need to duplicate it, but as you can see, the shape is already there. Now you might be wondering, well, what is going on over here? Now, if I were to do a, uh, let's go ahead and do a surface continue check over here. So I'm just going to have show mix label, show come on, and I'm actually going to, well, let's just check for G2. And as you can see, it is G1. So yellow or red, uh, depending on if the locator is selected or not, indicates that it meets position and tangent continuity, but it doesn't, it does not quite uh, meet curvature. And the reason for that is because as you can see over here, 
only a single sieve is aligned up to the primary surface over here. So that is why. If we want this to be curvature, uh, what you have to do is that this CV would also have to line up, or you have to have a transitional surface of, uh, between this one, this flat surface over here, and this one over here. All right, so after this, it becomes pretty simple as it's only a matter of duplication. But since uh, this seems to have some kind of thickness, so let's go ahead and add that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply grab a draft tool over here and here, and let's just make a slight thickness. I think 10 mils, uh, which is what I have by default, I think at least for this size is pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to go ahead and delete the construction history over here so that this actually uh, floats above the plane like this. And that's all I need. All right, so now it is just time for duplication. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab these two surfaces over here. And I'm going to say uh, duplicate mirror like this. Uh, looks like it's a duplicate on the other side. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and say duplicate mirror. And I'm going to say YZ like this over here. And I'm going to grab the whole thing like that. And I'm just going to group it and let's go ahead and duplicate over the XZ plane like this. And that is done. Now, back to the question of what do we do about this shape over here? So it's a shading problem. It is not necessarily the shape uh, because it is actually tangent. So let's go ahead and turn off the grid and I'm actually going to turn off the canvas as well. So for this one, you got to be a little bit careful. Um, so if I were to do a user, um, it still shows it like this. It is actually not the shape. So let me just show you how to do this. It is actually a tolerance um, and the test, uh, test later that's showing it like this. So what I need to do is I'm going to do a limit edge length like that. And I'm going to limit the edge length to, let's say, I don't know, maybe 10 mils to start with. Now, of course, if you have it at one mil, it's going to be a little bit harsh transition. So you just got, uh, well, it's actually going to burden the CPU quite a, little, uh, a lot. So you might want to be a little bit careful. But with the number adjusted, as you can see, it looks like this. Now, the only problem is, is this pinch over here. So if you look at this, you will see that there are a bunch of CVs uh, located over here. So if you wanted to do this, it is actually okay. But uh, for class A standards, it's probably better to have a little bit of space. So what I would actually recommend that you guys do is instead of having it like this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it visible. Um, actually, I wonder if I delete the curve. I might have. So let me just delete this one over here. And actually, I'm going to delete this one as well. And let's go ahead and actually let's start from the beginning. So I'm just going to duplicate this uh, edge over here. And I'm just going to give it a slight, very slight gap like that. And now I'm going to use that instead. So let me just move, uh, move the pivot. Now this one, you do have to uh, move the pivot to the center, make sure that it's lined up nicely. Otherwise it is not going to create whatever you want. So I'm just going to have it like that. Now these uh, draft surfaces can stay because it's not going to change the shape at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a rail over here. So it's going to be one and one. And this one over here, I'm just going to do the revolve. Same thing, same setup. And there it is. And now let's go ahead and duplicate it onto the other side like this. Oops, uh, not that one. So let me just grab this one and I'm just going to say edit duplicate mirror and I'm going to duplicate where YZ plane and there it is. So now that is going to create a little bit flat, but of course it's really small. So it's going to be in almost invisible, but that is going to be a little bit better because I'm not actually pinching all the CVs all together. So technically, uh, even though it's, um, well, it's a little bit different, it should actually give you a much better uh, result. So of course, if you want to fill this in, uh, for this one, actually, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So let me just grab everything. Let me group it. And again, I'm just going to duplicate it mirror. And I'm going to say XZ over here. And there is a handy tool over here. Uh, this is a set planar tool. So all you have to do is click on the tool over here. And it's because right now, 
all of these curves are planar, perfectly planar. Uh, it's going to automa uh, automatically select all of it. And if you say go, it's going to patch, uh, give it a nice patch to fill the space. So there it is. And that's how you make it. All right. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one. Want to learn Autodesk Alias and digital sculpting? Then become a member at 3ddesignacademy.com where you'll find hundreds of video tutorials ranging from basics, including curve creations, intermediate level tutorials such as this wheel, all the way to class A modeling of the entire car exterior. Interested? Visit 3ddesignacademy.com.